OK. First topic we're going to talk about is drug identification and quantification. And the basic issues that are always ignored, and we're touched on a little bit here today, is the difference between impaired versus a metabolite. Is there evidence, in fact, that the controlled substance either exists in its solid dose form, meaning like you know the marijuana leaves or the pill or something like that, or uh, in the person's system? Can they prove that it is a drug when it's in the solid dose state? And Melendez-Diaz, we had a great presentation. We, we had really great presenters here all day today. And you guys are very lucky. I'll tell you that in my own state, when we put on seminars or try and put on seminars, you might get 15 people. Um, you guys have like 200. So you all to be congratulated by far. And thank you for inviting me here. But here's what I really want to do is I want to talk to you about the difference between impaired and metabolite. Pennsylvania is a metabolite state, which means that if you have the metabolite in your system, then it's one form of DUI. I understand in your state that it is impairment, which is great. You have a lot more to work with. Don't fear it, and I'm going to show you why. Now, I'm going to teach you how to single-handedly beat nearly every single one of these DUI D cases that you encounter. That's a pretty strong statement. Okay, and by the way, we're taping this because I'm going to put it on YouTube. So uh, you guys honestly won't miss it. So don't feel like that you have to take down notes. I just really want you guys to listen to this. And I promise you, you can come back on YouTube and watch it again if you find it to be interesting. If you don't, then lose the URL, I guess, or something like that. But here's the number one secret on DUID cases when you have a lab result. You get this one sheet of paper that says basically, uh, you know, uh, testing sample 1.1. Uh, reveals contents by way of uh, gas chromatography, um, probably mass spectrometry, with a nanogram uh, per deciliter result of 505. And you sit there with that piece of paper and you go, man, my guy's guilty. Well, that's not true. And here is absolutely why. Because when you, when you take a look at it, the secret is the numbers by themselves are junk. When you have an impairment state, the numbers are junk. The numbers are junk. The numbers are junk. The numbers are? OK. Without a context, it is just junk. It's just a number. And it's just like a number out there on, a, uh, on an island that's just in and of itself, just sitting there. But it's not like a normal island. It's like an idiotic island, kind of like Gilligan's <laughs> Island. Now, the difference between a metabolite and actually impaired is going to be important in the context of what we're talking about here. A metabolite is any substance produced or used during metabolism or digestion or the breakdown of it. In drug use, the term usually refers to the end product remains after the metabolism. We'll get into that very specifically here in one second and translate it. Active versus inactive metabolite, very, very important. THC, not from your own personal experience, but who knows what THC is? Raise your hand. OK, all right. Some of you guys are lying. Uh, <laughs> but the bottom line of it is that there is a difference that's here. One is carboxy THC, or THC-COOH, as you see it is pharmacologically inactive. So if you get that magic piece of paper that you say, oh my god, it says 509. That's got to be bad, right? I don't care. It's junk. Because all it is is carboxy THC. It does not show impairment. It does not show impairment. It's the inactive metabolite. A lot of this stuff you can just get online and Google. Go to Wikipedia and take a look at it for yourself. No detectable THC and or the THC OH or Delta 9 THC. Your client was not under the influence at the time of the blood draw, period. Period. That's why it's important to know the difference between impaired versus metabolite. 